Severe migraine is one of the most disabling conditions, comparable to dementia. Many people don't really know the severity of the attacks some people have. People tend to trivialise or belittle the condition. So you, you kind of become a bit nervous about telling people, especially like, say, employee, employers, your other employees, um, sometimes even your partner, your girlfriends and your other friends, because they might go, hey, what's wrong with your head? Yet migraine remains the least publicly funded of all neurological illnesses. The City of London Migraine Clinic is a research and outpatient service for sufferers. The difficulties we have at the moment is that we have very little government support. The issues really are that until migraine is more firmly recognised for the disabilities that it causes, then we're just not going to get the support that we need. And it's not just government funding or support, it's support from all the organisations and people who could be involved in helping us treat migraine sufferers uh, better. Yusuf Masaji first began getting migraines when he was just 11. It was only when he suffered attacks at university that he was finally diagnosed. He believes that if more had been known and more funds available, he needn't have waited so long for a diagnosis. I get two to four attacks maybe a month and in general they make me feel pretty angry because I like to have control over my life. and having something that can kind of throw me so far off schedule happening so regularly just frustrates me and I think I, I'm not sure whether the frustration of having an attack sometimes makes the attacks worse. Over a third of migraine sufferers face discrimination at work as a result of their condition. Yusuf says he has personal experience of this. I had one career opportunity totally kiboshed by the fact that I had a medical history of migraines. Uh, I even spoke to an employment lawyer who said that there are migraine sufferers who are registered as disabled because the condition affects them so badly. It's sad that people are having to do that so that they can have jobs, support their families and be productive members of society. Meanwhile, the valuable work being carried out at the migraine clinic continues to help thousands of sufferers every year. Our finding very much at the clinic that knowledge is very much power when it comes to, to managing migraine and we really sort of open the conversation with our patients, getting them to realise that what we're trying to do is, is not create a cure for their migraine, which we don't have at present, but to turn it around so that instead of them feeling controlled by their migraine attacks, they actually feel in charge of what's happening.